So when Microsoft made this huge change, which changed the people web part, they didn't really account for all of its users. And people in law, hey, we're a big part of your users, especially right now that we're using it for case and practice management. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me today because today's video has been super long waited on. And that is the topic of context management when you're using Microsoft 365 as a case management, matter management, or practice management platform. Microsoft did us wrong, guys. They did a major update and they took away the people web part and how it worked with SharePoint. Before we were uploading our information to the admin center and contacts, we were bringing through that information into SharePoint and that information was available for all of our team members. But they did a major update in the back end of things they broke it and it no longer works the way that it did. So as Microsoft 365 users, we're ready for this, right? We can pivot because when we are working with technology that we own, with data that we control, then we have to be ready to pivot at any given moment. So if you want to know the answer to how you now deal with contacts management when you're working in SharePoint and Microsoft Teams and you're really diving into that Microsoft 365 world, I'm gonna give you the answer and your solution in this video. All right, click thumbs up if you haven't subscribe please what are you waiting for we want this information to get out there to the masses especially something like this because a microsoft i'm gonna call you out on this one later so let's get right into it today let's dive into things today okay so i know i am very casual in my dress today and i am representing this sweater because it's my favorite hoodie and is also from my favorite organization, which is BACA. BACA stands for Bikers Against Child Abuse. If you guys didn't know, I am a biker. My husband is a member of this organization. He has been for years. It's an awesome, awesome cause. And if you'd like more information about this particular group, then wait till the end of the video and I'll get you some more information. All right, so on to today's topic, which is how do we handle contacts management and handle it in the SharePoint and Teams environment in the Microsoft 365 world? All right, are you ready? Are you ready for that solution? All right, here it is. Microsoft Lists is going to be the application that you are going to use for global contacts management. There's going to be a lot more coming out from me regarding Microsoft Lists. And if you haven't already, check out my store online because there's a bunch of stuff in there for Microsoft Lists. But it has hands down become my favorite application within Microsoft 365 and all of the applications that that very diverse platform offers me. So when it comes to contacts management, remember what you were doing before, you were entering it into that admin center, you were bringing it through to that SharePoint site, but what you were going to do is export that information from your admin center, you were going to upload it to Microsoft List, and you are going to create a global contacts list on your team communication site. I want you to connect it right to your team communication site, that central hub that all of your team members go to every day at the beginning of every day. I certainly have mine open all day, every day, and it's something that I teach in that masterclass. If you're interested in taking that masterclass, the link is below. So getting back to that global context list that is sitting on your team communication site, you can copy and paste from that list anytime you want to. You can search anything on that list. You can search across all of your lists. You can filter by, you can group by. I mean, you can run Power Automates off of Microsoft lists. And for our clients, that's actually something that we're working on very hard for them right now is creating that automation solution that will allow them to change one contact in global contacts and it will change across the board for all 
active SharePoint sites. So if you want more information about becoming one of our Arrow 365 clients and using those SharePoint template solutions, there will definitely be a link in the description box below. So going back to Microsoft list, hands down, favorite application. There's going to be a lot more coming out for me on Microsoft list. In fact, there's a mini course that I've got in the works. You can pre-enroll right now for that mini course right on my website, which there is again, a link in the description box below. I swear that's like the third time I said that during this. So there is definitely a solution for the contacts list by using Microsoft list. Now, remember you can bring lists through to SharePoint sites. In fact, at the top right hand, or I'm sorry, the top left hand side of your SharePoint site, there's a big plus sign. And if you click that plus sign, it'll ask you if you want to add a Microsoft list, a new document library, a space, virtual environment space. Yes, Microsoft is going into that virtual environment space. So you will add a list. And when you add that list, you are going to create those columns and create the same columns that exist in your global contacts list. Just, you know, basic information, name, email address, contact information, you know, phone number, all of those good things that you keep, you know, in a contacts list, but it's yours. You get to dictate what you want to keep in it, where you want to see those columns, and you can copy and paste information from a global contacts list really quickly. You can go directly into the Microsoft 365 list application and search all of your lists across the board, regardless of whether or not they are connected to a SharePoint site. So that is a very powerful tool when you think about it. I am using Microsoft List to track a lot of documentation and things that are happening in my case. In fact, I've got seven indexes on my store of all the indexes that I use in my general litigation, day-to-day -day operations and things that I track in my case. Contacts list is not one of them because that's really something that is unique to you and the things that you wanna track in contacts. But I've got pleadings index, document production index, written index, depositions index, all of those things which you can upload to Microsoft list and use those across the board for any of your SharePoint sites, just hit the ground running. So. I know there's not a people web part anymore, but I encourage you to remove the people web part and instead add a list. And that's gonna be your contacts list and put that global contacts list inside that team communication site. And that is how you do it. Okay, so moving on, I do wanna say that, you know, GoDaddy, I called them out on the fact that they were really hijacking the admin space and they weren't allowing their users to check that box for external people to email into the Microsoft group, to the SharePoint group, to that dedicated inbox. And since then, GoDaddy has changed that. Now, while I still think that they've hijacked your admin center, I know it's for a purpose, but they have released that checkbox. It is part of your Exchange Admin Center now so that you can check that box, start using Microsoft 365 as a case management, practice management solution, regardless of who your third party purchaser was from. So if you have any questions about that, please feel free to reach out to me. And of course, there's always links in the description box below on how to do that. But I called out GoDaddy. I called out GoDaddy for those shenanigans and Microsoft. You are no exception to that rule. I'm gonna call you out on the fact that you removed the people web, web part without putting it on the roadmap and telling your users that you were taking the ability away from them to add external contacts into the people web part and connect them to a SharePoint site. So if you have attempted to do that right now, you know you can't do that. It must be internal users only as part of that people web part, people part of your organization. It cannot be anyone external. And, and for us in law, and for us who are using it as a case and practice management solution, that doesn't make sense at all. We do not 
want to use the Microsoft solution, which was to add these people as guest users on the SharePoint site, which then you would be able to add them into the people web part. The problem with that obviously is security. I mean, I'm not going to invite opposing counsel to my SharePoint site into my practice management system. Who does that? So what really irritated me about the fact that Microsoft did this is again, they didn't roadmap it, but when so many of you, the people, the users out there contacted Microsoft support about this issue, because nobody knew it was coming, the tech support acted as if that solution never existed. They acted as if the web part never existed in the way that we had been using it all this time. So for the tech people who are watching this, the Microsoft tech people who are watching this, who told people, hey, that never existed. You can't recreate it. So it never existed. I'm going to pop up a video somewhere along here that shows you that it did. All right. We would go into the 365 admin center and are all the new contact information, name, title, email, all that good stuff. Enter that person into the contact, click add and wait for it to process. Add the people web part to the SharePoint site, bring that person through to the SharePoint site and voila, we have the contact right there on the SharePoint site. Okay. So now you've seen that it actually existed that way. And we loved it because it created that contact card, which allowed us to send, see all the emails to and from that person and the file attachments to and from that person. And those are amazing little features. And even the LinkedIn, connecting the LinkedIn feature to it as well, because Microsoft owns LinkedIn now. But we don't have that anymore. We no longer have those features because Microsoft, you removed that ability. And no, we cannot add these people as users, as external users to our SharePoint site because we can't stop the email from happening from Microsoft that's going to tell them to work brilliantly with us. We, you know, don't want to handle all of those security issues and permissions and open up the door and expose ourselves to liability. I'm just not going to do that. So to get around that, everyone use the con, use the list for contacts, but Microsoft fix yo shit. And for the people who want to voice um, their own opinions on this. I will also include a link in the description box below that provides you the ability to voice that opinion. It is literally the user voice from Microsoft. So you can tell them your honest opinions and hopefully they'll put something on the roadmap to fix that solution and allow us to use the people web part as we always had before and bring those contacts into the admin center pull them through to the SharePoint site and see them in a very organized, awesome way. So if you're interested in learning more about Microsoft List, you're interested in about the mini course, sign up in the description box below. There is a link. And of course, head over to aeroconsultants.solutions or a365.legal. Head into the store of either of those sites, download any one of those formatted Excel lists, upload it to Microsoft List and use it to hit the ground running with all of your cases. These lists are specifically formulated for general litigation use. So I think there's seven of them, but we're talking client docs. We're talking medical records requests. We're talking liens tracking, document production, written index, depositions, you name it. I mean, th there's there's a ton of them in there. I think I think I might be missing one if I am and we'll, we'll put it somewhere here on the screen. But Use Microsoft List, get in there, really, truly work at it. And I think you will find that it has a wonderful space in your SharePoint environment. It has been an amazing asset for my firm for preparing for trial and just really, and just really getting there faster. I mean, that's all we're trying to do, right? I mean, we just want to get there faster. 
All right, guys, if you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and consider clicking that bell notification so you receive a notification of each time I put a video on here. All right, again, this is the BACA organization. It is Bikers Against Child Abuse. I will link information in the description box below if you'd like to check out more information about that organization. And yes, you must be a biker. And yeah, I'm a biker, if you didn't already know that about me. All right, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. Have a wonderful weekend day ahead of you, and I will see you guys back here on the next one. Mwah! Bye, guys.